Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and Webcast One Live.com. Welcome to 99.3 KTIA FM, The View from the View with Reich Plekis and my co-host Bob Montserrat. And today is a, a day uh, that shall go down in infamy, Bob. Um, is that correct? Is that how you say that word? Infamy. Infamy. Inf- infamy. Infamy. I want to congratulate uh, uh, Mayor First Lady Sally Kickbush Gare in all of her love, her prayers, her efforts to go to Capitol Hill and to fight for her daughter's life and others just like her in regards to the introduction and the passing and acceptance of the bill for medicinal marijuana and the oils and so on and so forth that go along with that program. Uh, you know, uh, kudos to you, uh, Sally, and all your team members uh, for the prayers. I know that you have taken a, a long stance in regards to standing firm in regards to uh, your daughter's uh, condition and other people just like her, even though they are a small population of our, our uh, people here in Iowa and, uh, and abroad. It's still people that we need to have a common care and concern for as well. So congratulations to you on the passing there in the house it looks like bob it was what 36 to 12 voting that's what it looked like from the photo all right well hallelujah we are joined with our guest i'm going to call him pastor i'm going to call him minister bishop cardinal priest reverend robert marshall from chicago illinois is joining us today here at the view from the pew and uh, uh how are you doing minister marshall Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Thank I, I you so am, much for having me. I am blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> God, you, is good. <laughs> God is good all the time. Amen. And um, I just want to uh, give uh, your family a shout out and the people of Chicago a shout out. Uh, I know that great things are happening on the South Side. South Side. And uh, you are a part of them. Amen. Amen. Yeah, man. God, is, God has blessed us to be a part of some great things. Um, not only on the South Side, but in the city of Chicago. Period. Um, it's a great, it's a great time in the city, and God is doing some amazing things through some amazing people. So tell me, you and I have been following each other on on Facebook for a while now, and and corresponding back and forth. You're originally from Brunswick, Georgia, correct? Correct. How oh, did you, town, Brunswick, Georgia? How did you end up in Chi Town? Well, man, it was actually the plan of God. Uh, I was the first college, high school graduate out of my family, and I decided uh, to move to the city of Chicago to attend North Park University uh, many years ago, and uh, it was a word from the Lord. I moved uh, to Chicago with no money, no friends, no family, no connections, and uh, when I decided to take that leap of faith, God opened unexpected doors for me as I walked, and uh, as I got to Chicago, doors opened for me. I became the youth pastor at a prominent church on the south side of Chicago. Pastor didn't even know me, uh, but I felt the, the call of God on my life and gave me an opportunity in the city of Chicago, and that's really how I got my foot in the door in a lot of different areas in the city. So are you there to stay? Are you are you going to uh, keep your feet planted there? I, I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? Are you going to stay in Chicago? Are you going to keep your feet planted there, or are you, are you being sent out elsewhere? Well, man, since my tenure in Chicago... Um, God has opened many other doors. I, I am in Chicago, and uh, I am serving here in Chicago. I have a ministry called Glory House, and as well as, um, but we are abroad. We are, God has opened doors for us to be established in England and Africa, many other different places. And tell us, how did it, how did Glory House Ministries come about? What I mean, I know that God births up ministries, but how was it laid upon your heart for this to happen? Well, man, actually, it was uh, it was uh, our ministry started from a bunch of college students who really just wanted to experience the presence of God with no strings attached, and that's kind of how the movement was birthed. Uh, it was uh, different college kids from all walks of life, different cultures: white, black, Hispanic, Asian, uh, Chinese, and we really just wanted to see a move of God. And we basically got together and. 
the power and, and just really created a safe place for people to encounter the presence of God in the city of Chicago who didn't want, and I know this is a cliche, but didn't really want church as usual, didn't want the church games or the church gimmicks, but wanted to be able to experience the presence of God unrestrictedly and unreligiously. I want to mention that uh, we have the tagline up, gloryhouseministries.net, and your mission statement there is to spread the glory of God throughout the world with the help that we can break the cycle of poverty and change the future for young people all over the world. All the services and mentoring provided by Glory House are possible through generous donations, and if you want, you can actually make a donation to Glory House Ministries right there on their website at gloryhouseministries.net. You, Amen. you know, um, you are having um, coming up on April 26th, you're having a prophetic meeting. And when you and I spoke on the phone, uh, you said, you know, what's our topic going to be? And I said, you know, worship and, and prophecy, prof- you know, prophetic happenings. Tell us what's going to happen at Gates to Zion International at 3679 on West Grand on April 26th. Uh, well, man, it's just a uh, April 26th. It's going to be man, a prophetic uh, move of God where we are expecting uh, the power of God to... Uh, let me let me backtrack and say this. I really believe that uh, our, this generation, we've become prophetic junkies, and many of us really, without a true understanding of what the prophetic ministry really is, many of us think that the prophetic ministry, if somebody calls my name out, tells me my phone number, my name, uh, and tells me some information about myself that I really already know. And that's ne- that was never... Um, the true purpose of the true prophetic ministry uh, within the world. If you look at biblical prophecy, um, the the purpose of the prophetic ministry was not to give people goosebumps, but the true purpose of the prophetic ministry was for no other reason but to reveal the heart and purpose and perspective of God within the earth. And so many of us, we never really truly experienced, we experienced spiritual gifts, but I, I, I really don't believe that it's all prophecy. Um, some of it's word of knowledge, word of wisdom, um, uh, uh, and so many other spiritual gifts that are or revelational gifts that are given to the body of Christ for the edification of the church. But true prophecy is it's for uh, true prophecy is God's perspective being established within the earth, God's heart Come on. being revealed Come within on. the earth. And so if we, I, be, I, I am crazy enough to believe, and I stand by this, that the basis of, of true prophetic ministry uh, is relationship, is relationship with God. Um, it's like, right, uh, if you have family members that you spend time with and you get to know, you, uh, you start to understand their heart, you understand their voice, you understand the reason why they do what they do, you understand their perspective. And... Uh, and really, uh, and it's the same way with God. The more we spend time with God, the more intimacy we have with God, the more we become acquainted with His presence, His voice, His ten- the tenure of His voice, His will for our life. And so uh, prophecy, uh, the basis of that is relationship. And so many of us, we become prophetic junkies, and we look for so-called uh, prophets because many of us don't really know the voice of God or know the God that we say we serve or believe in. Say it. And how, how can I be connected to a God that I don't talk to? i.e. prayer. Prayer is the foundation. It's the language. Uh, prayer is the language of God. It's the communication with God. It's the avenue to build a personal relationship with God. And so let's not even talk about prayer because, you know, many people in church, we don't, we don't pray. Come on. You know, <laughs> I, I think if, if I didn't know better, I'd say he was like 55, 60 years old, preaching forever from, from the age of six. Uh, he Pretty doesn't look it. <laughs> <laughs> this man is full. How long? How long have you been involved with uh, church with God? I'm, I'm sorry, say that again. How long have you been involved with God? How long have you been in a relationship with Christ? Man, I have been in ministry since the age of five. What did I say? In, yeah, <laughs> I said five, six. Since age, <laughs> right, since the age of five, and you know, and not to say, and it's all glory to God. Um, I haven't been perfect all those years. I've made a lot of mistakes and I had some a lot of growing pains. But through that, the 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 place, my place of security has always been to know that God is with me. Um, I'm 23 years old, and one thing that I'm great about, I'm I'm glad about, is that I grew up old school, like Pentecostal. So I grew up in a time where I couldn't go to dances, couldn't wear shorts, couldn't do all that other stuff. Um, 
and I really had to go to Terry. I had to go to Terry service every Friday night and Saturday prayer meetings. And so it was it was crazy. And uh, I'm so glad but that I got that foundation of of knowing what it means to be in relationship with God and communicating with God. I came from an area where people did not have a lot of education. They did not have a you know, a lot of influence within the community. They did not speak el- with eloquent words. But one thing that they did had, they had a true, authentic relationship with God. And when we met for service, God met us there. And what I believe is what our generation is truly missing. We have lights, we have cameras, we have actions, we have uh, we have productions, we have fog, and all of that stuff is great. But what does that mean if God does not show up? Mm, mm, mm. You make, you make it Bob's head shake here. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm, I, I, you know what? I'm all for the life camera, and I, I love it. I love professional church, and I love, you know, I love the presenting the gospel with excellence. But what is the point of presenting the gospel with excellence if the power that comes behind the gospel is not prevalent? The power and truth, Amen, Amen. My Lord, <laughs> you're you're gonna make you're make relationship. you are gonna make me bust out the ham and bee right here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're going to take a station break here in just about a minute and a half, but I want you to give a shout out. You are engaged to the lovely Jacqueline Cruz. Yes, I am. You better I give her a shout baby. out. Hi, what's up, baby? I love you. Uh, Lady Jacqueline Cruz, Lady J, she's the love of my life. And man, that's a, it's even a big testimony behind that that I hope I have time to share while we're on the air. But uh, I love that woman of God. She travels with me everywhere um, to my whole Glory House team. Uh, Carida Ramos and uh, so many, uh, and Santiago and Sergio and all the people who travel with me and Nika, I love all of you. See, that, now that is a minister right there. He made a disclaimer, you know, I'm going to try and give a shout out to all of you. So he said everybody right there. And then he started giving the kudos to the special people. But, you know, they're all special. And I could tell by the vibrancy that you speak of and the determination that's in you and in your heart that you're truly, truly walking out the love of Christ. Tell me real quick before we go to station break about Project Hood, helping others obtain destiny. Well, Project Hood is an organization that was started by Pastor Corey Brooks. Amen. And, uh, he's he's a pastor that I don't know if you all have heard about him, but you need to check him out. www.projecthood.com. Project Hood is an effort to uh, uh, empower the urban community. Um, Hood actually stands for helping others obtain destiny. Helping others obtain started, destiny. That's right. Right. It was started by Pastor Corey Brooks at New Beginnings Church who saw that there was a need in the community, and God challenged him. He sat on the roof for 90 days, sat on the roof for 90 days, walked across America from Chicago to California, has had various marches and and rallies, and he's doing some great things on the south side of Chicago. And right now they're actually in a uh, campaign to raise $2.4 million to— save the church and help build the community center. All right. All right. And, you know, I remember Corey Brooks being in the news for, for camping out on top of the building because he wanted to buy the hotel across the street from New Beginnings. And right. and the young woman in the congregation that won the Harley Davidson on the Tom Joyner show. And exactly. that uh, actually uh, Tyler Perry heard about her wanting to sell the Harley Davidson so she could donate the money to the ministry to buy the drug-infested prostitution hotel across the street from the church. Is that correct? That's correct. And I tell you what, that a person that God gives a ministry to like that, th- those are world changers right there. And I've driven by, well, actually, I was at New Beginnings last year when Jason Miller had his CD recording concert down there. So I think I was probably, wow, great. I was one of the lighter shades of brothers that were in the house, but you know, I was there. So I've experienced uh, the worship style that took place that night. Um, we're going to take a break. I tell you what, if you have a question for minister, brother, pastor, cardinal, bishop, uh, Robert Marshall, you can call us at 855-244-0077. That's 855-244-0077. You're here with me, The View from the Pew, 99.3 KTIA FM, and we're going nowhere but up on the rest of this conversation because I can tell you this brother from another mother, even though he is 23 years old, is full of of the Spirit of the Lord of Jesus Christ. Amen. Tune in. We'll be right back after this.
obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. Yes, now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone, tablet, or iPad. Yes, your favorite shows on Webcast One Live are available live or on podcast wherever you go. Let me introduce to you some of our great shows. Shalom! Every week on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman, we'll talk about issues in the Middle East, issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Like right now. Did you feel anything? Yeah. You did? I was dealing with some back issues um, due to the depression that I'm in, and right now they're gone. I have a sickness called Lyme disease. It was really bad, and I could have died up of it, but um, God healed me of it. So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships. Transform your world. Amen, amen. That video clip that you're seeing right there, and welcome back to The View from a View. That video clip that you're seeing there is a clip from Minister Robert Marshall and Glory House Ministries. You could find him on YouTube by looking him up at Robert Marshall Prophetically Ministering or Robert Marshall Prophetic Ministry, and you will find uh, some more of his video clip library right there. Welcome back to the show. Uh, pa- I'm going to call you pastor. I just got to do it. You know, it's called Respect. Oh, man. Even though you're half man. my age, you know. <laughs> man. You know, that that's crazy. Yeah, man. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I don't really use titles, but hey. Hey. You know what? Here's a title for you. We are all kingdoms. We're all citizens Amen. of the kingdom right there. We're all citizens of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. You, I should say his name is a good name. His name is a good name because your name is Robert. Robert. And what that means is bright with glory. How do you like oh, that? wow. You Say always <laughs> bright with glory, Bob says. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, my, see? And, yeah. I'm in my good company. Name, right. My whole name is Robert Haziel Marshall. So Haziel means vision of God. So, yeah, hey. 
Wow. I can go with his name. See, he even <laughs> speaks in tongues. Hey, Shandra. <laughs> See? <laughs> so um, I, I showed a clip, I showed just a, a kind of an introductory clip there, Robert Marshall prophetically ministering uh, from YouTube and uh, for Glory House Ministries. And you guys are culturally diverse, culturally unique. There's young, there's old, there's white, there's black, there's Hispanic. Uh, you have a blended culture of people that are stepping up to the plate to be found, to be, to be rooted in the foundation of Jesus Christ. Is that correct? That's correct, man. To God be the glory for it. Hallelujah. And tell me what uh, are you guys working um, in um, cooperation with uh, Pastor Corey Brooks? Are you having your own uh, services? Where are you currently meeting? Well, currently, um, Glory House, the ultimate vision for Glory House is to be a ministry center to train and equip uh, people to serve God while loving people. Um, currently, Glory House, we are a, uh, if you will, we are a mobile ministry. We do small groups, and we do conferences, revivals, as well as seminars, retreats um, to, uh, for, uh, for people from all walks of life to really empower them and equip them uh, to uh, to serve God, man, by loving people and uh, revealing, helping them reveal their purpose. Uh, and we are a parachurch organization, so currently we are not a church, and I make that very well known. Anyone who is involved with Glory House Ministries has to be a member uh, with uh, or has to be involved in some local assembly. Uh, but what we are, we are a parachurch organization, so it is our responsibility not to be the church or to take people from their church, but actually to walk along alongside the church uh, to help the church uh, uh, to effectively minister to this upcoming prophetic and apostolic generation. Hallelujah. And the tag that we've just put up on the screen, and you'll be able to see that uh, when you come back in, is Glory House Ministries. It's got all your contact information there. It's got your phone number, gloryhouseministries.net. It's got you and the lovely, lovely Jacqueline Cruz uh, uh, embraced right there on the poster. Uh, and you can just tell you had the. Can we get that back up, Ryan? Got the joy of the Lord and their smiles. Contact you at 773-2-GLORY-1 and uh, all your social media. I tell you what, if you have a, a, a need that needs to be filled, not only in the city of Chicago, but elsewhere, elsewise, please reach out to Minister Robert Marshall uh, at Glory House Ministries. Uh, let them come equip and encourage. This man is is lit up for Jesus. Even though he's 23, he's more profound than some pastors, some reverends, preachers, apostles, and teachers that I know that have been doing it for 60 years. Hallelujah. So anyway, we're all in this together. This is a, this is a kingdom fighting Amen. business that we're in. Amen. So Amen. what is next for you and Miss Jacqueline Cruz? What is next, man? We are always on the go. Uh, besides the huge wedding day, uh, man, just continuing to empower, strengthen uh, young people as of right now, young adults. We are about to launch some small groups within the city of Chicago over the summer, and we really want to spend one-on-one -on -one time with people to uh, really help them become whole, heal and whole. Yeah. Amen. And you, you wanted to tell us how you met the lovely Jacqueline. Well, man, there's a big testimony behind that, and the uh, testimony behind that is, and I don't mind sharing, is that I never thought that I would be married. I never thought that I would be married, never thought I would be in a relationship. Um, I was in, I was immersed within a sexual per, per, uh, promiscuous lifestyle prior to meeting Jackie. Jackie was actually one of my best friends. Uh, before that, uh, I had pretty much... If if it had been done, I had done it. I was basically sleeping around with anything and everybody, and I really wasn't looking for. Uh, I was I really wasn't looking for to be in a relationship. I actually I told God I said, you know what, I love you. I got to the point where I said, God, I love you, and I don't want to continue to live this life. But I don't think I've never thought that I would actually be attracted to a woman. And I was and I really said to. God, you know what, I will live a celibate life um, and live a holy life before you because I was tired of being used and I was tired of hurting people because I was hurting. Mm -hmm. And so I took some time, and I, if you, anybody who knows me, I'm a glad, my, my life is a glass house. I will let you know anything. So I, um, 
I pretty much uh, was living for about a year. I moved out of the city of Chicago to, you know, and got ministered to and restored. And um, I met Jackie in that process. Well, Jackie and I, we already knew each other, but we started talking, if you will, during that process. She was the first person that was open, you know, honest and open with me where I could share my heart with. And God, I will not tell you, it was a God thing. God revealed to me that, and I know that sounds crazy because you hear people saying that. So don't take me for it. Uh, you know, God told me this is my wife as, you know, that doesn't work for everybody. The devil is a liar. But for in this case, in this case, God really spoke to my heart, revealed it to me that he told me this is, uh, this is your wife. And I remember sitting in tears, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, asking God, why did, you know, he speak to me like that prophetically? I said, well, why did you speak like that to me? And he said to me, so you wouldn't mess it up. And so uh, uh, Jackie, she knows my story. She knows, she knows where I've been. She knows, you know, the, the whole story. And I, if you, I have a, uh, I have a blog where I talk about uh, uh, the struggling brother and and how uh, the church really, I don't believe, does a good job of ministering effectively to people who are dealing with sexual brokenness and identity brokenness. Do you believe in generational curses? Um, I do, I do, I do believe in generational curses, and I also believe in generational hurts. And tell us the difference in those two, because some people that some of our listeners do not believe in generational curses. And if you go back in the in the Bible, you will see that there were generational curses passed down. Yeah, and I, uh, and can I break that down? Because I, and what I'm and this is what I more so my viewpoint is it's uh, it's uh, past hurts, uh, past hurts or undealt with or unresolved uh, issues within the bloodline that's been passed down from generation to generation, and so uh, hurting people hurt people. And they are things that are passed down that people never really deal with. If I could break it down in the kind of uh, uh, way that people could understand it, um, it's really uh, and generational hurts, generational curses. I believe sometimes are one and the same. They are just issues that All prior right. generations that ha- they have not dealt with, and they did not uh, be, and they weren't healed from them. Come on, so say they it. Got passed down from chill, from generation to generation. Mama was a crackhead, daddy was a hoe, and so therefore, because they never really sought wholeness or never, uh, no one ever came in their life to show them that they, how, that they could be healed, that by a subsequence or by, as a result, that seed got passed down to the next Amen. generation. Amen. Because nobody ever dealt with uh, or was in a position where they allowed themselves to be healed. He is preaching, Bob. Yeah. He mm-hmm. is preaching. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let me ask you this in regards to the generational curses, generational hurts. So, do you believe that in mainline denominational churches that maybe we wouldn't often see those generational curses because we just don't deal with in-depth issues of our relationship with Christ? So, would you say that that's a fair assessment or not? I'm sorry. Say that one more time. Do you feel that in mainline denominational churches that we may not see the generational curses because we don't have a more in-depth relationship with Christ? I mean, do, do you right. see that? Make that plain. Um, I, I really believe, and I hope I heard the question right. There's a little bit of static on the line. But um, I, I do believe because uh, many of us, we many we weren't, back in the day, we weren't taught that the church of old really was, we had a reverence for God. They They handed down the fear of God. They had they uh, and the wrath of God and what they fail to uh, because of their own understanding or lack of education, I believe, did not pass down uh, the the uh, the understanding one of the grace of God and the love of God. Uh, they they taught us how to be holy. They I taught know. us how to fear, yes. and reverence God, but they didn't teach us about the love, the grace, and the mercy of God. Come on, and the God that cared, the God, the, the incarnate God, as I say, that wrapped Himself in flesh to come see about us. Come on, about about the God who knew that no matter how holy we or not holy we were, that we would never be holy enough 
or or great enough to get to him. So he loved us enough that he wrapped himself in clothes and in flesh, and he came and dwelt among us. That he knew that I could never reach him on my on the best day. So he came and got us. And so you know, this is part of my testimony as well. That I, even me growing up, I never felt that God could really use me, or God could never really do anything with my life because I had too many issues. But as I got older and I realized that my relationship with God is just that. It is a relationship and that God does not need me, but God actually wants me, that God has pursued me, that his love pursues me, that his, you know, grace follows me. And so therefore that my 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 the the, the relationship that I have with God is not based on a religious system or do's and don'ts or what I can and can't do. And I live a holy life not because I I, I necessarily have to. I choose to because I love him. Come on, say it. It's a love relationship. When you are in love with someone, you are willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that that person is pleased, that that person is well. And I want to make sure that God is well and that he is represented well in and through my life. Tell us about Step Into Your Moment. Say that again. Tell, about step into, tell, tell us again. about Step Into Your Moment, the preaching that you did. Um, step Into Your Moment was a sermon that uh, that, we were, that we were talking about, and it basically had to do with uh, uh, realizing that there is a now moment, that there is a now season, that there's a now moment, and there's a now season. And that Hold that you right there. Wait. You're preaching. We're getting ready to go to another break. I told you this goes so fast. God is so good all the time and all the time. God is good. We are with minister, pastor, preacher, prophet Robert Marshall from Chicago, Glory House Ministries. If you have a question, call us at 855-244-0077. Get ready to go in. That's where we're going right after this break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> 
Keep going though, I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed right or it's free or 100% money back. Not said. Her arms are empty. Her barrels are empty. Her hopes and dreams are empty. She no longer is identified by her name, but by her condition. How many times has society tried to put a label on you? How many times have people tried to give you a name that was less than a child of God? Uh, and I want to let you know something that my grandmother told me a long time ago. Baby, it doesn't matter what they call you. All that matters is what your answer to. Uh, and some of y'all, y'all been answering to the wrong name. Uh, and you need to get a revelation tonight in your desert place uh, to remind you of who God says you are. And to make matters worse, it's not just her, but her offspring with her. She finds the fruit of her womb with her and sees no way out. Have you ever felt trapped? Mm, mm, mm. Have you ever felt trapped? We're talking live with Minister Robert Marshall from Glory House Ministries, Chicago, Illinois. And I tell you what, you can preach the eyebrows off of an Eskimo. <laughs> <laughs> to God be the glory, man. To God be the glory. You know, not many young ministers can captivate a congregation. And I don't say an audience because an audience is partaking in a, a performance. And that's the difference. People really need to know that. And right. I, I tell you, you are ministering to, to different ethnicities, different cultures, um, you know, uh, and, and to the multitudes, God is using a 23 year old prophet. I'm just going to call it as it is a 23 year old prophet to reach out and, and, and change the foundation of some people's lives. Is that correct? Amen. To God be the glory, man. He, he is man. such a considerate young man. He doesn't say, yes, that's correct. He just says to God be the glory. Yep. Now, that right there. That's a, that's a kingdom saint right there. Mm -hmm. So you met, you met your wife, you, you told her the test, the trials, the tribulations you walked through. You're now engaged, getting ready to enter into a uh, matrimony with her. And uh, you're already, you're already married in ministry with her. What's her background? What does she come from? What does she do? And, and how does she uh, complement the ministry? Well, man, actually, believe it or not, Jackie, she did not grow up in church. She actually, you know, she gave her heart to the Lord at the age of 17 and, you know, God has used her. She's a preacher within herself, uh, within her own right. And I call her my own personal prophet. God uses her prophetically as well. Uh, and God actually, she has a grace on her life that I don't have. We travel together. God uses us, and we flow together in ministry, man. Like, man, it's, it's crazy. Um, God gave us a vision for our marriage, and we are to be like Aquila and Priscilla to show people the greater way we walk together in ministry. And she is a prophet within her own right, and she operates in the gift of healing. I'm talking about if she prays, God hears this girl, and people get healed. I'm talking about I've seen in services that we've been ministering together, she prayed for babies who are blind and their eyes are open or people who are deaf and their ears start opening up and legs and backs being healed. It's, man, it's ridiculous. So I kind of hit them from the top. She gets them at the bottom, and we meet in the middle somewhere. Amen, amen. Bob's smiling here, so he's got a question or some well, input. I guess it's a comment. What you ex what you are experiencing, you know, healing and miracles, that should be normal Christian life. Right. It should be. You are certainly right. I like you. That is it should be. <laughs> but it's not it's not recognized as normal. And I think a lot of people are afraid to uh take a step out. And, uh, oh, glory to God. And, and really God. only believe is what it takes. I think of Smith Wigglesworth, what he would say is only yeah. believe. All things are possible, I, I, only believe. 
glory to God. I feel the presence of God even on this phone right now. I, 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 oh, my gosh, I feel the presence of God, and I really believe that there is about to be a manifestation of the presence and the power of God within the world. Hear me, not just within the church, but within the world. I really believe that there is a prophetic and apostolic generation, and what that means is a people who will... Uh, revealed the heart of God and the apostolic ministry, the purpose of it was to establish the purpose and the plan of God. And I believe not just a prophet or an apostle, but an apostolic and prophetic, hear me, generation that is going to raise up other ministry gifts like this that will reveal the heart and establish the purposes of God within the earth. Well, this would be the norm because I'm letting you know, I believe that the world is getting as bad as it is. Not I because they need, they, the world wants God. People need God. They don't need our religious uh, uh, kind of our, our religious sayings. They don't really. They don't need the form of godliness that we offer that is void of power. But people are hurting. People are broken, and they need to experience the true, authentic presence and power of God. Amen. Mm-hmm. He took his glasses off. You made him think. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I just think the youth, uh, and, and I'm speaking that way because my youngest boy is 28, so uh, it just gives you an idea of my age. But, but I am, I'm so uh, amazed at the youth and, and their being on fire for the Lord. And uh, because I look at myself, who was raised uh, a believer from an early age, but I look at these youth that are so far more advanced than I was, you know, at their age and even later. This just tells me that the Lord is really moving uh, in the youth in today's day Amen. and age. Amen. Desperate times call for desperate measures, man. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I always kind of went by the sta- saying that you got to do something different that you've never done, you know, to get, get a different result. And I tell you, you know, I think so many people are entrapped within the four walls of the church that they really can't, you know, buy their way out into to God's grace you know I didn't I did not uh, get raised up in the church either and uh, you know my eyes have been open to a lot of different things I've seen a lot of mess a lot of hurts a lot of you know church hurt and so on and so forth but that's when God tells you to remember keep your eyes on me not on man Amen. and I, I tell you I think that you are on the, the right step the right measure the right movement I think that God has ordained you for a time such as this you know, um, I, I, when you and I were corresponding back, you, you were like, Reich, please, no titles, you know, but uh, where a title comes, comes a test. God is, is seeing if you can uphold the standard in which he has appointed you to take. You know, he didn't make me uh, a pastor of a church or to minister to the multitudes like you're doing. He's, he's making me as a device, a vessel, a conduit to bring you and the other people together is what he's doing. And that's a ministry in itself. You know, but um, I tell you, you are doing great things. I, I'm watching you and hearing the things that you're doing. I'm very well connected in Chicago. Um, you know, not so much down in Georgia as much as I'd like to be like in Atlanta and so on and so forth, because I know that Atlanta needs Jesus, you know. Right. Um, but uh, God is is shaping and shaking the church to stir them up, you know, for God to shake up Hollywood and have Hollywood make movie after movie after movie of trials, tests and tribulations that are coming you know, to, to make money off of the multitudes, he, he should be stirring the church the same way. And that's when we need to be used to, to remove the blinders of the people Amen. to, to allow them to see what truly God has in store for us and the favor that God has for us as well. You know, so I tell you what, you, you keep doing what you're doing. Do Don't look back. Don't look on your, you know, somebody told me once and I'll probably mess this saying up, but the greatest person to succeed was the one that never tried. The greatest person to succeed is the one that never tried. And you didn't know unless you broke out of that shell and God removed you from your atmosphere, your environment that you were in, your promiscuity or whatever it was, just call it as it is. You know, a saint is a saint and an ain't and it ain't. You know, and God picked you up and turned you around and said, hey, this is how you're to be used. And, yeah. and you've stepped out and stepped into his anointing and pro- prophetic uh, word and movement. I think, I think that's key, where you said that he didn't do it himself. That's you right. Know, Robert yeah. didn't do it. That's right. We can't yeah. do it ourselves. And he said, that, he said that in his interview. You know, it wasn't him, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, you have a gathering of the saints on June 26th coming up, a night of prayer at 5702 West Diversity. Tell us about that. 
Well, the Gathering of the Saints is a action ministry that uh, it's that is, is a collaboration um, with a ministry called United in Christ We Stand that's actually ran by uh, Carida Ramos, and she's one who travels with me, and God uses her prophetically as well. And the gather, the purpose of the Gathering of the Saints is to bring the body of Christ united as one from different cultures, backgrounds, and denominations together to pray. All right. We're getting ready to take another break here. We're with Minister Robert Marshall from GloryHouseMinistries.net, Glory House Ministries in Chicago. We'll be right back after this with more 99.3 KTIFM and The View from the Pew with Reich Plekis. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart, and it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car, everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you and tell them Max sent you. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships transform your world. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. To see the other side, this woman has been blinded by the issues of life. And because of her socioeconomic status, it has hindered her from progressing forward in life. She's, mis she's not just fighting herself, but she's fighting a system that has been put in place to keep her in a place of bondage. She's fighting a system that was put in place so that she would never succeed. She's fighting a system that has been put in place uh, that made sure that she would never achieve her dreams and her goals. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're back with Minister Robert Marshall of Glory House Ministries in Chicago, Illinois. And I, I got to tell you, pastor, minister, brother, we were just sitting here talking about you. And, and Bob and I are shaking our head, 23 years old. And I was saying, I was saying to myself, I didn't tell Bob because I don't share everything. But I was like, if you only knew what I was doing at 23, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I probably did my best of my worst at 23, honestly, and, and, and to be filled with the joy of the Lord and, and the prophetic anointing that he's put on your life at such a young age. I can't see, I can't wait to see what happens with your children, you know, wow. because about the babies. Yeah. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> There's a story behind that, man. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, I guarantee we've gotten about, at least, and I'm not even exaggerating, 35 to 40 prophecies about our children. Well, <laughs> all I had to do is say, get ready. You know, um, uh, when when my first was born, uh, we were not planning it whatsoever. My wife had just gone through uh, cancer treatment, um, had a had a large mass removed and so on and so forth. And, and the doctor, you know, even after the surgery, the doctor came out and said, don't worry about having babies. I have one testicle. My wife has one ovary and we have six children. I was like, this is things you don't share. You know, this is TMI. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I will say this, you know, I, I am, I am seeing the birthing in the spirit through you and your wife and just get ready. And, um, you know, people that know me will say this. I mean, if I, if somebody started calling into the show right now, um, whenever I see a, a, a pregnant woman, God tells me if it's a boy or girl, it's not a 50, 50 chance. God tells me, and I have like a 99.9 percentile correctedness. Um, in regards to knowing if that child is going to be a boy or a girl. My mother used to be a, an administrator for a large OBGYN healthcare firm. And I remember going in the summer, riding my moped down there to get some money to go to the amusement park. You know, I'd sit in the waiting area until they called me back to her office to get some cash. I'd be like, boy, boy, girl, boy, twins, triplets, boy, girl. And my mom would code their charts. And I was like, I was like 15, 13, 15 years old, a moped, you know, didn't even have my permit yet. And, and then it was just like, we didn't even know God back then. I mean, Christmas and Easter, that was it. Make sure our name is still on that stained glass, you know, but, um, get ready. God has got, he's, he's given you the desires of your heart. He's given you the joy and the manifestation of the Holy ghost. Use it. Don't abuse it and make sure that you just transform lives that will change forever, ever. And, uh, and, you know, if you got Christ in you, Christ is with you, who can be against you, you know? And, and, you know, um, I could, I could sit and give testimonies of my life, my brother's life, you know, my, my sister's life, my mother's life. And, and God is good. I can honestly say this, Robert, my father had 25 years of marital affairs. Dad, I'm, I praise God. You don't listen to this show because you'd still beat me down for sharing your, your laundry list. But, th- but through the last woman that he had an affair with, she was born again, spirit filled. She, l- she was used as a vessel to lead him to Christ. And now I can honestly say, Robert, that my entire family is born again. Oh, wow. My entire Thank family, God. my mother and father just turned 80 years old. Uh, my father's uh, last wife divorced him. My parents are dating each other again at 80 years old. I mean, he, he's flying in this next week to, you know, to see my mother and he opens doors for her and gets flowers for her. things he never did when they were married, you know, for 30 years and wow. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And, okay. and so when people are, are speaking over you, it's not that they're speaking you to rush into childhood, you know, fatherhood, adulthood, you know, that way it's, it's truly something that they see in the spirit. And, um, you know, they always say, if you could pay, pay it, don't play it. You know, you, you, nobody is ever financially set to have children. Trust me. It just happens. (laughs) Just happens. So anyhow, Bob, you said somebody on the the chat chat said he was a great man of God. Yeah. Awesome man of God, uh, God, uh, prophet Marshall. It's from a pastor D. I don't know if you know Pastor D. No, I don't. Well, somebody thinks you're awesome. Oh, well, other than your oh, wife. God, <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm, what? I'm still interested to know right about these kids. What what were you saying? Um, I see the number five for some reason. Wow. <laughs> five. Wow. Wow. Isn't the number five a significant number, biblically speaking? Seven is. I don't know about five. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. I wouldn't want seven kids in my household, you know, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I'm just seeing the number five, you know, and um, God, God is good and God will provide where God guides. God provides. I truly believe that. Amen. Amen. And um, this is something else I see. I see that your, your wife to be is going to go back to her family and she's going to be used as to be life changers to her family. Amen. Amen. I re- we received it. I will let her, Amen. Amen. That's good stuff. And I I would never take the name or claim of a prophet. I run from titles, too. I don't, you know, I'd be like, disc jockey. Yeah, I could spin Chaka Khan, you know. (laughs) But um, I I just see that your wife is going to be used as a vessel to reach out to her family. And I I truly believe that to come forth. And you know what? Robert, they're going to receive you. Amen. They will receive you. Amen. you know, we grew up in a, a time in our age, not you, but me, and Bob's a little bit older than me, through a lot of stupidity. And we've seen a lot. And those are, those are hurdles that we've had to overcome. And so people are not as quick to receive from us as they would more so somebody of your, your generation. Uh, the generation Xers and, and younger, you know, I don't even know what the next ones are after Xers, but, you know, um, 
you are truly being used as a vessel and being made in the image of God to be a life changer and accept that walk it out. Don't look at your past hurts, your past obligations and obstacles other than knowing that they're a testimony, you know, Amen. and, Amen. and, Amen. and this is another thing, you know, we're getting ready to cut it out for the day here in a minute and a half. Don't let the pastors in that city tear you up because you are so young. And I want to give a shout out to Barb Finley. Hey, what's up, sis? The number five symbolizes God's grace, goodness, and favor towards humans. There you go. Amen. But get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You know, um, God has set your feet on that path, and not another pastor can walk in it. Wow. To God be the glory. And, and just let him move and have his being in you. And, and he will make all things come to fruition in your life. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, this has been a blessing. You and I have been corresponding back and forth. Uh, I'm going to be in Chicago tomorrow. Um, I just sent you my number again saying, hit me up after the show. And it's been a blessing. I want to have you back on. I want to bring you to Iowa. We uh, have a y- huge youth conference here and uh, we, we have some works to do. Okay, man. I'm looking forward to it. Give, give me a quick 20 second shout out to your family and your church family. Hey, I want to give a shout out to Liberty Christian Center, also New Beginnings Church Chicago. I love you all. Uh, Kingdom Impact, I love all of you all. Uh, glory, my Glory House family, I love all of you all uh, across the world. We love you. God bless you. There it is. Uh, but, amen. Remember that God has great things to store for your life, and don't believe anything else. That's it. And Jackie Cruz, he loves you. Until next week, tune in at 99.3 KTIFM.